Hello you, it's me. Today we're going to talk about The Bloody Chamber and other stories by Angela Carter. Once again, I'm back on my short story hype because I love short stories so much, but I'm also never sure how to review collections of them. But that's not going to stop me. This is just probably going to be a ramble. There's not going to be much marked on the time bar. And this is probably going to be a very short video because this is a very, very small book. This is a collection of Angela Carter's stories, traditional fairy tale themes and archetyped twisted into something much more profound, adding to them and exploring them on a deeper level. Themes that have been lost in translation over the years in adaptation and readaptation of these stories, like femininity, motherhood, loss, death, things that really form the core of fairy tales, and Angela Carter brings that darkness back. She reforges fairy tales in what they were originally meant to be stories to be told around a fire in the dead of a winter night, stories to chill you, and stories with an important lesson at the centre. You could unpack Angela Carter's stories for days. You could go through each story to find each piece of symbolism in each scene with a fine tooth comb, every line. These are very descriptive, very flowery, almost like poetry in places. So if you don't like overly descriptive writing, this probably won't be for you. But for anybody going into this, I say you will probably recognise a lot of the fairy tale tropes in here. Don't read these for the plot. Read them for the embellishment, the unique Carter style, the fresh perspective. These are classic themes in a new light, taking the seed of an old story and doing something very new with it. Angela Carter actually commented on what she aimed to achieve with this collection. I did write it down. She says, My intention was not to do versions, or, as the American edition of the book said, horribly adult fairy tales, but to extract the latent content from the traditional stories and to use it as the beginning of new stories. I agree. I think that sometimes what people call adult themes are really what people of any age should be reading. Kids can be shown adult themes, they can be shown adult lessons. It's just a case of showing them to kids in the right context and explaining when you show them these adult themes what is healthy and what is not healthy. These aren't grown-up fairy tales. They are just unapologetic fairy tales that are not sugar-coated but somehow still incredibly beautiful. There is no deus ex machina man swinging in right at the end to save a damsel in distress. The hero of the stories for the main part is the main character, and that makes for some really, really great role model heroines in here. These stories acknowledge sex, they acknowledge sexual desire, and acknowledge how these things change people. They explore how the act of sex can mean very different things for different people, which is important. This was published originally, I think, at around the same time as this sort of sexual media revolution, when there were bans on erotic novels, uh, bans on pornography finally being challenged and lifted. Traditional sex roles were being questioned. People were being allowed, for the first time, at least in the 20th century, to express thoughts about sex in media. So these very patriarchy challenging and very feminist stories were probably very inflammatory, and very needed at the same time. And I think they're so brilliant because they denounce acts. They show the harm and damage caused by choices without being directly accusatory of a group and having an upfront agenda. If you are interested, there was a 1984 movie adaptation of one of the stories in here, uh, The Company of Wolves, which is great. One of the best werewolf movies. You should definitely go and watch it. 80s retro, 1984, I think it was. So I really enjoyed this one. Going to give it four stars. As I said, really short video. Not sure how to review this kind of stuff, but we'll try. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more reviews. Come with Thick and Quick. I read pretty fast. My Goodreads and Twitter are linked down below. Don't forget to follow me on there. And if you like sci-fi, don't forget to join our Interstellar Book Club, which will also be linked in the description. And I'll see you soon for the next one. Bye.